Hi, Washington artists. I'm excited to read this book to you. It's called Emily's Blue Period by Kathleen Daly, illustrations by Lisa Brown. Chapter one, Pablo Picasso. Emily wants to be an artist. In school, Emily is learning about a famous artist named Pablo Picasso. His full name was Pablo Diego Jose Francisco de Paula Juan Nepomuchino Maria de los Remedios Cipriano de la Sensitima Trinidad Martyr Patricio Clito Ruiz y Picasso. Emily's name is Emily Rose Pinchner. She wants to change it to Emily, Emilia, Rosita, Jenny, Juanita, De Las Alto, Igordella, Eyeball, Montoya, Fluffy, Pinchner. So far, her parents won't let her. Picasso was a cubist. Sometimes he broke his pictures up into cubes and unusual shapes. Things in his painting weren't where you'd expect them to be. He may scoot a nose way over, putting it in far from where it usually goes, or stack an eye right on top of another eye. He liked to mix things up. So does Emily. Chapter two, all mixed up. Lately, Emily's family is mixed up. Emily's dad is no longer where he belongs. Suddenly, he lives in his own little cube. So you can see here, mom, Emily, and Jack are in one house and the dad's in another. And I think Emily's thinking and calling them all cubes because she's thinking about how Picasso is a cubist. Dad needs to pick out furniture for his new home. Emily sees little cubes everywhere. Do you like this, asked dad? It's a soft cube you can put your feet on. No, no. What about this? It's a big square rug. No. Everything is pretty, but nothing looks like home. Did you know that Pablo Picasso was so poor when he moved to Paris that he couldn't buy furniture? Really? He painted furniture on his walls so his apartment would feel more homey. Really? Where's Jack, says Dad a moment later. Jack, Jack. Jack is hiding behind a big couch. He won't come out. This is my fortress. No one can come back here. Come on, Jack, says Dad, but Jack won't budge. Jack, come on, we can't sit on this couch forever. Now Jack won't talk. No budging and no talking. This is ridiculous. He stares at the other busy shoppers. Emily watches too. Jack is quiet. Dad reaches back and scratches Jack's head. Big mistake. This is my couch fortress and no one can touch me. No arms allowed in my fortress. Now the shoppers are staring at Dad and Emily. All right, enough. Dad picks up Jack like a sack of potatoes. They leave the big square store without a thing for Dad's new apartment. Just a silent bag of potatoes that looks like a boy. Chapter three, blue. That week, Emily's teacher calls her mom. Mm-hmm. Really? That's unusual. Em, that was your teacher. She said you wouldn't do the art project today. I thought you loved art. Yes, mother, I do love art. Then why didn't you do your project? Because we were using charcoal and charcoal is black, says Emily. What's wrong with black? Oh, I can't use black because I am in my blue period. When Picasso was very sad, he only painted in shades of blue. And now I am in my blue period. It is a little early in my career to be having a blue period, but it is happening all the same. Emily nuzzles her head into the spot under her mother's arm where it fits just like a puzzle piece. Emily's blue period lasts quite some time. Chapter four, collage. One day, Emily learns about collage in art class. It's kind of artwork Picasso and his friend Baroque like to use. You add all kinds of things together to make a piece of art. Emily can't wait to try. Okay, class, I want you to make a collage of your house. You can use anything on this table that reminds you of home. Emily sits very still. She has two homes. Which one should she make? She sits and stares at her blank paper for the rest of class. 
Mom, is your house or dad's house my home? Why they both are, why do you ask? Well, you can't really have two homes, can you? Why not, asks mom. A lot of people have more than one home. Home is where the heart is. That is what it says on Billy Bob, Billy's mom's pot holder. Emily is quiet all through the rest of dinner. She moves all the different kinds of food on her plate into the shape of a heart before she eats it. Hmm, look how she put her food in a heart. After dinner, Emily starts digging through things. The recycling, her mother's sewing kit, the junk drawer, like a little animal burrowing here and there, stashing things away into a little brown bag. That Saturday, she burrows into things at her dad's apartment too. The wet bar, the toolbox, the top desk drawer. Then she gets to work. And work and work. Cutting and gluing and gluing and cutting some more. Chapter five, big and soggy and beautiful. Finally, she is done. It's big and soggy and beautiful. Back at mom's, Emily hangs the collage up to dry. Emily, you're done with your blue period. Yep, says Emily. I mostly make collages now. That's a collage of my home. That's not a house. That's a big heart with a chimney on it. Hey, look, there's my head. Well, it's not a house, but it's my home. It's the home of my heart, says Emily. See all the stuff from dad's and mom's plus Jack's head cut out of a photo and Jenny's friendship bracelet and other stuff that shows what's important to me. Emily, I love your collage. I'm glad my head is important to you, Em. Right before bed, Emily notices a purple blob in the middle of her collage. Mom, Jack scribbled on my collage. Mom and Jack come running. I didn't, I didn't. It's not a scribble, it's a purple heart, says Jack. I think your collage is the home of my heart too. I'm sorry. Oh, thought Emily. Emily is remembering what her teacher said about collage, how you take things from different places to make a whole. Actually, it's okay, Jack. Your purple heart makes it better. Really, says Jack, you mean it? Really, says Emily, and she does. Now her collage is perfect. The end.